Welcome to another Stompy 51 miniature adventure. Or rather this time, it's more of a kind of eBay miniature rescue, albeit without the quality camera work and great gags. So there's this Spanish miniatures company called Nightmare Miniatures. Night as in dude in armour. Nightmare Miniatures. And they cast up really fantastic old school, old hammer miniatures and they get, you know, the greats, you know, like Kev Adams to do sculpting for them. And uh, I've always liked the look of what they've got. But after we severed our relationship with the European Union, I haven't yet had the confidence to work out, you know, that if I spend below 135 quid, that I won't get slammed with like another 50 quid's worth of fees. So where did that leave me? So one day by chance, because I often look up Warhammer fantasy stuff on eBay, I saw this pop up. I mean, there were a whole load of really cool nightmare miniatures that the same seller was flogging, poor fellow. He obviously just lost interest. And all that stuff went for almost as much as it goes for new, probably because no one else wants to buy from the European Union either at the moment for fear of tariffs. And so this was all the only thing that I won. Not bad going, basically, you know, eight quid fifty, given, I suppose, it costs about 18 quid in, in, in pounds first hand plus postage. And uh, and I won it. And there are these two wolves, which are kind of big and clunky, and I'm not sure what to use them for, though I'm thinking with my beastman chariot. But that's a tale for another day. And I had to kind of wash it all. Um, but the chassis was just, it was coated in dust, um, but all in perfectly good shape, but no wheels. But I thought, look, if anyone has bits, it's got to be me. And so we come to a resolution to that matter and you'll see in the video in a few moments these two side panels um this weird kind of orky facade was actually from a different kit i only figured that out later and this giant snm dude with the whip and he is absolutely huge he's like as big as a as like a you know a, a one of 40k orc anyway he i didn't think was that in keeping with the rest of my collection. So he's been abandoned. But how did I make this good? How did I fix it? But I cobbled them together. I found some wolves floating around from when I played Warhammer 7th edition back in the day. And over here you can see I found a couple of uh, wheels from the corpse cart in my bits box. And I mean, I did get those weird skulls facing the wrong way around. I thought it would be fun that they'd be sort of in your face. But actually, the gobos go for more of a sports car sleek kind of look with the kind of tail fins at the back. I mean, is it just me or do these chariots remind you of something as well? But let's take a look at what it all looks like once painted up and finished. And so how did the big boys paint up and let's start with the junior gent the junior gobbo of the relationship so i'll talk him through so uh he is a gobbo boss i think from probably about 2010 and to give him a bit of variety i gave him a shield from the oathmark skeleton sprue i mean admittedly it it's clearly a very ancient shield. It's like a sort of 10,000 BC European kind of shield. But hey, it just, you know, maybe he just nicked it from some graveyard or archaeological dig that he just crashed. The whole vibe, as you can see, is clearly kind of Attila the Hun on Celtic chariot mix, which is obviously a strange thing, but that is the nature of the goblins. And that little fellow over there is a Heartbreaker Miniatures Kev Adams Mini. And, you know, even though he's a stylistically early 90s dude and he's a 2010s kind of dude, I think they mix reasonably well. I mean, I must say the uh, chariot does look a bit better with the elephant tusks kind of facing that way rather than facing forwards as per the picture I just showed you. They're quite fun and menacing. I mean, skulls of what? I mean, they are exactly identical. But then again, I suppose human skulls are all pretty identical. We imagine these are 
goblins they didn't quite agree with. Or maybe they're the top parts of human skulls. Maybe they disagree with some humans. The wheels, as mentioned, from the corpse cart. So not a very comfy kind of ride. If you look at it very carefully, but that's part of the story, isn't it? Clunkety, clunkety, clunk. So when the gobbos finally crash into you, they are not happy gobbos. And, you know, maybe they just tied this little yellow ribbon on there just for luck and a peen to their gobbo gods. I love blood for the blood god. And you do have to ask, you know, how long does bone marrow remain healthy after you've ripped a tusk off? But maybe these have been hurriedly put together, all these chariots. And uh, part of the story, of course, is that the, uh, the creature has only recently been robbed of its tusks in an evil poaching effort by these nasty little goblins. Look at the little beadiness in those eyes. Let's get that in focus. There. Nasty beadiness in focus. So the chariot. I mean, it's got a lovely long... I, forgot, I don't even know what that's called. Spine. Ah, perhaps slightly obscenely, it's called the shaft. Thank you, Wikipedia. As part of the chariot, I think these were supposed to be kind of some kind of horns, but I thought, you know, that's not very comfy for the the little doggies, the little um, wolves. Maybe it's just some kind of, you know, wrapped leather from some squig or something for additional comfort. And then there's a ram. I mean, properly, it's a ram. And I did go wild thinking, you know, I always have fun at the end thinking, where can blood for the blood god go? And if we're talking about the collective, how could I have forgotten the little fellow over here with his little bow? And he must be from the Gorkamorka sets from, again, uh, must be the very late 90s, early 2000s. Not mine, but that's the one. I put him in there. I squeezed him into that little gap because often in all the rule systems, you're called upon to give these goblin chariots some kind of ballistic capability. And so that little fellow has a great task on very narrow shoulders because he is responsible for the entire ballistic capability of this gobbo chariot. That where's Wally? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. I always have fun with blood for the blood god at the end, going through thinking, you know, what parts of this device could have smacked into the enemy? And obviously, it would be these scythes, which I made out of the spears from the Goblin Plastic Games Workshop box from way back when, just clunking them in there. I didn't, uh, unfortunately, uh, do the usual of screw it, of um, using my drill bit for these two parts and then using a little bit of paper clip. I should have done that because I imagine it'll fall out, fall off. But then again, I thought, you know, it's plastic. This is plastic. Surely the plastic glue will just melt it nicely. And if it breaks off, then I'll sort it. But anyway, in putting blood for the blood god everywhere, I put some over here thinking, you know, this is a ram, properly a ram in every sense and it will have smacked into somebody at some point. The only problem is that now it looks like he's got some lipstick on. But you know, come give a little doggy and a ram a kiss. Smack. And so there they go. The little goblin cooperative on this little chariot. I mean, there's no reins or anything, but then again, the original Games Workshop one, I say original, the one from the 2000s and late 1990s, it doesn't have a dude with chains or reins because the little wolves presumably can follow instructions, a rare thing for even a human. And he's just got a little mini whip, a 
suppose like with huskies when they have a sledge, they just shout mush, mush. I mean, they used to in the cartoons. So there's the standard historical goblin one, uh, Games Workshop uh, chariot, vis-a-vis -vis the nightmare miniatures one over here. Well, kind of pieced together from various bits. And because this man is clearly a leader, clearly a Grom the Paunch character, even though I think he's just called Goblin King by Felix Paniagua, a fantastic sculptor, I think, who did work for Games Workshop back in the day, but now his own, has his own little Spanish company called Avatars of War. So because that this is the regal chariot, I gave him the wolves with little helmets. Oh, I should put blood for the blood god there. But, you know, you can go too wild with these things and they end up looking like some kind of chaosy thing. Well, I did put blood for the blood god on the sides and these kind of sides as well. I mean, what, I, what really came out to me, having repainted this, because I painted it back in the day for Warhammer 7th, probably in 2010, and not very well, is that actually, if you look at, there's so many little details. I think you can see it from here. Can you see that little face that looks like a... Whimsical Notre Dame gargoyle sculpted in just for a bit of malevolent character. There's a little goblin-y nose, nasty little goblin-y eyes, and then a little kind of um, ring through the nose of the little goblin, and a little frowning, harumphing little face. If you turn it around, that's the harumphing face. But then there's the evil grinning face with this uh, leather strap coming out as if it were a tongue. And isn't that cute? And even these little bits of metal on the side holding in the wood. Let's see if we can try and focus on that. There, yes, we can. Some kind of nasty little frowning face, grinning face inanely grinning face, and there's another inanely grinning face on the other side, which makes up the fact that these wolves are deeply unimpressive plastic miniatures that look pretty goofy. So he's a 2010s, I believe, maybe early 2000s, goblin, screeching with his little sword, whipping the little doggies, Felix Paniagua's Grom the Paunch, holding two probably dark elves who foolishly decided to argue the toss with Grom the Paunch. I think he's called the Toad Gobbler by Felix. And you can see the little red poison toad, but not an issue for a man with all manner of acids in his stomach. And then strangely, I think the biggest piece of character on this model is this dwarven axe. And you can see there's so much story screaming out of it because you've got the remnants of this clearly beautiful, beautifully made dwarven axe. But it's broken, so it's been kind of cobbled together by lesser workmanship with these kind of metal staples by the goblins who have decided to put, presumably, the skulls of the former dwarven owners in Hearthguard onto the axe. And I take this moment to note that whilst this is the old Felix Paniagua Grom the Paunch, he's got big time into 3D sculpting, and this is the new Grom the Paunch. Bigger, fatter, and was, you know, still with great character. Now, the reason that I was compelled to keep with these wolfies from, I mean, they're, they're ancient, are they? they could even be from the earlier than the 90s, these little Games Workshop little wolfies, was because I already have the Horde being 16 of these Goblin Wolf Riders, plastic wolf riders from the 1990s. But I broke off their heads because there was a lot more character in these Cromlech resin heads. Look at that, look at that. He looks like someone you wouldn't really want to bump into on the plains before this kind of pack of Hun-type creatures comes upon you and, well, kills you and takes all your stuff. 
So I've got two groups of eight of them, which is really useful for Saga Age of Magic, where there, are, there can be eight warriors times two, or Dragon Rampant, where I think it's units of six, so six, 12, 18. So if I want to have another unit, I would just try and get another two. And I'll just have to keep my eye on eBay and see what comes up. They often go for quite a lot. They often go for like 80 quid for a pack of 12. But anyway, I'm sure at some point I'll get hold of some more. Ah oh, yes, and when I say Cromlech heads, of course what I meant were Spellcrow goblin heads. Thing is though, that I got so excited having finished those that I swapped with the mate for his two goblin chariots, which he sat sitting around for donkey's years. But you know what he did? He took four perfectly good plastic wolves and he chucked them. Because to be fair, they do look pretty awful and old and clunky. And I think he was going to replace it with, with something cool. But you've seen my collection. There's all those old wolves. So I need to keep the same wolves. What will I do? Time, methinks, for a cri de coeur on the Lead Adventure Forum, Bazaar of Obscurities, Wanted Threads. Please, does anyone have four little wolves? Kind of the opposite of the three little pigs. Instead, could I please have four little wolves? Let me in, let me in. Anyway, enough of all of that for today. Thank you very much for watching to the end. Please do subscribe if you haven't done. And uh, leave me a comment if you have any thoughts to share whatsoever. Have a good evening or day, wherever you are.